I'm excited to welcome you to our Cancer Cabinet Community Conversation about prostate and genitourinary cancers. First, I would like to thank our veterans joining us today. For those of us here from VA, we are extremely honored to provide health care to those that have served. I would also like to recognize our incredible staff at VA and all your contributions towards optimizing cancer care for veterans. Through your efforts and our collaborative partnerships, including with academic, governmental, and community organizations, VA has continued to advance cancer prevention, screening, treatment, and research. At VA, we have 21 precision oncology centers of excellence for prostate and other genitourinary cancers. These centers provide expert precision oncology focused clinical care, access to clinical trials, and ensure our veterans have access to high quality cancer care and veteran focused research. Since the launch of the Precision Oncology Centers of Excellence in 2018, experts have provided prostate cancer care to 10,529 veterans, including 1,756 veterans with metastatic prostate cancer care, and published 65 studies in 2021. VA is piloting a project built on the foundations of the Million Veteran Program, which is the world's largest genomic database linked to a healthcare system. Through this project, we are working with participating Million Veterans Program veterans with metastatic prostate cancer on new therapies to improve the quality and length of veterans' lives. This work will continue to improve our current clinical pathways of care and provide equitable treatment for veterans with prostate cancer. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to further advance cancer care and research. I turn now to Dr. Charles Ryan of the Prostate Cancer Foundation to carry the event forward. Thank you, Dr. Lieberman. We are so appreciative for all you lead at the Department of Veterans Affairs and for your partnership with the Prostate Cancer Foundation. The Prostate Cancer Foundation is the world's leading philanthropic organization dedicated to research and the eradication of prostate cancer. The PCF fully supports the cancer moonshot and is prepared to do what is needed to accelerate progress. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer among men with one in eight diagnosed in their lifetime. That means that right now, one man dies every 15 minutes from prostate cancer in the United States. The PCF's vision is to end all deaths from prostate cancer by raising awareness and funding cutting edge research across the world. We join President Biden, the Veterans Administration, and the cancer community with the shared goal of reducing the death rate by half and helping patients and their families live well beyond cancer. By doing this and more, we will end not just prostate cancer, but all cancer as we know it. PCF is here for you. We are the global public square of prostate cancer, building new opportunities and developing life-saving research to connect patients to clinicians and scientists around the world. As you know, may know, the prostate, prostate cancer is currently the number one cancer diagnosed within the Veterans Health Administration. Starting in 2016, the VA partnered with the Prostate Cancer Foundation to advance best-in-class research and care for veterans at risk for prostate cancer. Doctors and scientists at 14 PCF VA Centers of Excellence are collaborating to bring the latest breakthroughs to veterans, and this work is expanding nationally with seven additional new genital urinary centers established this year by the VA. Through the science we fund, including our $50 million philanthropic commitment to serve veterans first, PCF is speeding critical research and teams of scientists, scientists that'll, that will lead to new treatments and advances in education and support that will save and extend the lives of veterans and all men fighting prostate cancer. If you or a loved one has prostate cancer, I encourage you to visit the Prostate Cancer Foundation online at pcf.org. Once again, that's pcf.org. 
to learn more about our special resources for veterans, military families, and caregivers. Next, I have the great privilege of introducing Dr. Carolyn Clancy, who serves as the Veterans Health Administration's Assistant Undersecretary for Health for Discovery, Education, and Affiliate Networks. Dr. Clancy, we are so grateful for all you have made possible through our ongoing collaboration with the v VA PCF Partnership and for all you lead on behalf of veterans and their families battling prostate cancer. Thank you, Dr. Ryan and Dr. Lieberman, and thank you all for having me again as your moderator for this Cancer Cabinet Community Conversation about prostate and genitourinary cancers. Today, we will be speaking with veterans and VA providers who are also part of our academic affiliate network. Our first three guests are calling in from the Los Angeles area. Veteran Patrick Dennison was an Army Scud Buster operator and is a survivor. Dr. Matthew Reddick is the Chief of Hematology Oncology at the Greater Los Angeles VA and Professor of Medicine and Uro Urology at the David Getson School of Medicine at UCLA. Dr. Isla Garraway is a Staff Urologist at the Greater Los Angeles VA and a Professor of Urology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Welcome. First, I'd like to hear from veteran Patrick Dennison. Patrick, I understand that faith played a big role in your treatment and your cancer care journey. Could you please speak to us about the importance of your faith and what you would want and like other providers and other veterans to know? Uh, faith is one of the most important things. Uh, I had strayed away from the church and kind of was on the wrong path and then I was facing death with cancer and sat down and uh, asked God to help me. And uh, I periodically got little thoughts that, and that's kind of how angels speak to you, is in your thoughts. And I even had visions of me in an infusion center that I didn't know until I got into one what it was. <laughs> it was rather confusing, you know, and uh, a message that a clear liquid's gonna save my life. And in short, the chemo that originally I started on accelerated the cancer uh, and it wasn't working and there wasn't any options. I had cancer in the kidney, both lungs, three tumors in the brain, a tumor in the throat so big that I was at the point I couldn't swallow food. I was drinking Ensure to stay alive and I ended up with the cancer moving into the liver and the spine. So I was in a walker. And, you know, I asked uh, my uh, Dr. Reddick, uh, there's nothing we can do, we're kind of stuck. And I asked him about the Opdevo. I told him that every time that commercial would come on, it was like I had to watch it. Something was making me watch it. Even the tinnitus in my ears, uh, subsided. I thought, literally thought they were cranking the commercial up louder. And then I realized that it was more of a message. And it was the Opdevo. I asked Dr. Reddick about the Opdevo and he said that FDA had just approved it and I would have to sign a waiver. It's a kind of an experimental thing. And I'm like, give me a pen, let's go. So, um, Every two weeks, I walk into an infusion center for treatment. And when I walked into that infusion center, it was deja vu. It was identical to what I saw in the dream. Other than the hoses I saw in the dream were hoses, not IVs. <laughs> it was kind of weird. So that was part of the confusion. And I, on the, on the third, every two weeks was a treatment. On the third treatment, the, the tumor in my throat had disappeared. I mean, it was wow. had healed over to the point where you didn't even know it was there. And Dr. Reddick knows my personality, so I couldn't help but say, I think the cancer is in my stomach. <laughs> He's like, why, is your stomach hurt? I go, no, feels fine. But the tumor in my throat, I swallowed it. <laughs> the look on his face, I wish I would have took a picture. <laughs> and uh, he looked down my throat and he said, oh my God, it's gone. And he sent me over to the MRI and the uh, uh, CAT scan. 
And uh, I came back and he said, this is a miracle, it's working. I've never seen this before. So Dr. Reddick is an amazing doctor and he did the right thing. I believe that I was sent to him through God and uh, he saved my life. So now you have it. <laughs> that is just an incredible, awesome story. Um, miracle indeed. I'm literally back in a race car. I drove over the weekend. I'm sixth place in points. Uh, I had an eighth place finish because of a little kind of mishap at the beginning of the race, but normally I'm in the top five and uh, 65 years old and I'm racing against 20 year olds and I'm, they're scared of me. <laughs> It sounds so, like they should I, be. That's good. <laughs> I owe it all, all to God and Dr. Reddick, and he put us, God put us all together, and it's amazing how it works. Really, really um, an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, it's, it's, I have a wonderful life, and uh, because of him, I got my life back. Since 2016, my experience with the VA, I feel as though they have brought the best of the best in to help veterans. And I have noticed that all the nurses and doctors, they pretty much can work anywhere they want. And they choose to serve the veterans of the United States of America. All right. Love them all. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for sharing your story with us. And um, I know I and many, many others are totally inspired. So really a gift to all of us. Let's talk more about Patrick's treatment. One of the pillars of the cancer moonshot is the right treatment for the right patient. Dr. Reddick, can you talk more about what this means at VA? Yeah, thank you for this uh, opportunity. I just First, I want to say thank you to Patrick and all of our veterans for putting themselves on, our, on the line to defend our country, our constitution, and our way of living. So uh, when we talk about the right drug for the right patient, what we're really talking about is precision oncology. Precision oncology utilizes specific features, characteristics of patients or their tumors so that we can select the right treatment right medication to give to a specific patient. It's not throwing spaghetti at the wall and, and using a one size fits all approach. For example, many of the precision treatments we're using nowadays leverages the VA's ability to perform next generation sequencing, a DNA analysis of the patient's tumor to try to select the best drug, the right drug for the right patient. This is often done in the context of FDA approved drugs, as well as clinical trials that we have throughout the VA and the VA prostate cancer uh, clinical trials network, as well as other networks. So this is really a promising area of uh, uh, clinical uh, approach. Uh, we find that when patients are, are matched to the right drug, they tend to respond better have better impact on quality of life, on survival, and it ultimately it, it benefits uh, the patient uh, and the veteran. So that's where we're headed now, and we're building on the uh, panel of drugs that we can use in this regard. And we hope to continue to expand it so that every veteran, no matter where he or she is, can access precision oncology. Well, thank you. I noticed that you referred to um, we reaching all veterans, and um, and I know that providing equitable care is a very big priority for the Moonshot. Um, could you speak to how the VA provides equitable cancer care, Dr. Garraway? Sure, Dr. Clancy, I'd be happy to. And thanks also to Patrick for sharing such an inspiring story. So I think in terms of achieving health equity, it is a really important part of the VA healthcare mission. It's almost an integral part because the VA healthcare mission is so focused on access and providing that access to healthcare. 
but it's not only providing access just to healthcare. It's an integrative approach to healthcare that is truly patient-centered, as you just heard Dr. Reddick talk about. So what does that mean? What does an integrative patient-centered approach mean? So that means that it creates an environment where specialists like myself and Dr. Reddick can collaborate with the patient's primary care team um, and account for all of the medical history of that patient, their family history, and their life experiences that may impact their disease. Um, and so that allows us to really personalize the care for that patient and provide the highest quality care. Another thing that the VA does to really achieve health equity is um, support evidence-based approaches to care and really um, codify these evidence-based care pathways so that they're available to all of our providers across the network. So we are really aiming for this highest standard of practice across the VA network, and that will allow us to achieve the best out outcomes in our patients and, and for all of the patients that come to the veteran healthcare setting, no matter where they're from, what part of the country, what nationality, what origin, we can offer them the best practices. And that helps us to achieve, um, reduce some of these gaps um, that you, we see sometimes in different groups of patients. Well, it certainly makes me proud to be serving veterans uh, with uh, specialists like yourselves. How does the VA contribute to improving the way cancer is diagnosed and managed? So I can speak a little bit to that as well. Um, so um, in addition to, you know, just really improving access again, you know, so it, again, so much of what the VA does is about access. They implement tele telehealth, um, video visits, making everything easier for, for patients to access us as well as us to access the patients. Um, we can even now uh, remote in to more community satellites of the VA to have specialty care offered to patients there as well. And so that allows patients to have access to the screening and early detection that's necessary to improve um, outcomes. In addition, the VA has many innovative programs um, to really study um, how, you know, our history um, and, and how the treatment of veterans um, can be improved. Um, for example, um, there's a million veteran program, uh, which is a, like a mega repository where um, uh, veteran volunteers can submit blood samples um, and then have genetic analysis of those blood samples. And then they're followed over time. Um, so that leads to this really large population, literally nearly a million veterans who have genotyping performed on their blood samples. So we can understand what may be influencing disease development in these patients. So that will lead to better prevention, detection, and treatment strategies. And Dr. Reddick, did you want to add more about the precision oncology uh, piece in terms of improving how cancer is diagnosed and managed? Yeah, so in addition to what Dr. Garraway just mentioned, one of the first formal collaboration strategic partnerships that the VI undertook was with the Prostate Cancer Foundation, and you heard from Dr. Chuck Ryan uh, earlier today, uh, and uh, he is the president and CEO of the Prostate Cancer Foundation, the largest philanthropic uh, foundation for prostate cancer. And we uh, initiated uh, a precision oncology program in prostate cancer. It goes by the acronym POPCAP. And what this is doing is really focusing on precision oncology in prostate cancer amongst veterans. Prostate cancer is the number one diagnosed uh, cancer amongst veterans and is the second leading cause of cancer-related mortality amongst veterans behind lung cancer. And this program has uh, aligned specialists in prostate cancer from across the country and has several centers of excellence that work together to provide precision oncology to veterans with prostate cancer. And this uh, program and many of the programs that you have heard about from uh, Dr. Garraway uh, are in large part offshoots of the uh, PopCap program. And it's been very successful. It's been growing. We have more veterans undergoing genetic analysis. And the success of it, which was originally built on a, a contribution, a major contribution from the Prostate Cancer Foundation, has now uh, been recognized by the VA. The VA has uh, started to substantially contribute to the precision oncology budget and has expanded precision oncology to lung cancer. 
which is the number one cause of cancer-related deaths amongst veterans and, and the U.S. population. So these are two really important programs, and it's my understanding that the VA will continue to expand on these disease-specific physician oncology programs. And one important part of it, which you'll hear about a little bit later from Dr. Montgomery, is a virtual clinical trials program, which allows us uh, to give access to veterans from all around the country to participate in clinical trials if and only if they wish. Clinical trials are, uh, are important. They are an option. They are not required. And when patients join clinical trials, we know that they do better. They live longer than patients that don't join clinical trials. So this is an opportunity, but not a requirement for patients. And whatever patient a veteran chooses to do, we're always the patient's doctor. And whether they participate in a clinical trial or not uh, is totally up to the patient. That is an option. So those are some of the additional programs that have helped execute precision oncology within the VA. Well, this is just really, really exciting. And I want to thank all of you for discussing VA's role in providing high quality, equitable, and patient-centered uh, cancer care and the resources available. Our next guests are also calling in from the West Coast. Dr. Bruce Montgomery is the clinical director of VA's Precision Oncology Prostate Cancer Program and staff oncologist at the Puget Sound VA. He is also professor of medicine at the University of Washington and the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, sometimes called the Hutch. Dr. Julie Graff is the section chief of hematology oncology at the VA Portland Healthcare System and a professor of medicine at the Knight Cancer Institute at Oregon Health and Sciences University. We also have Dave Seidel, a former Marine who served in the Vietnam War in the motor pool. Welcome home to you, Dave. Dave, I understand that you receive your care at the VA for prostate cancer. Could you please tell us about your experience receiving care at the VA? Yes, I can. Uh, I, I came to the VA just automatically, you know, and uh, Julie Graf, uh, she's a wonderful person. She, she kept me lined out. I, she told me when I arrived that there was no such thing as a, a cure. So I had my prostrate out, and she's been with me. I've been on two of these studies. She always makes herself available to me. You know, my wife and her correspond. Big Judy keeps up. So that's about all I got to say. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. You, you have a wonderful wife. You mentioned being in a couple of studies. Is there anything you'd want veterans to know when it comes to clinical trial treatments? I, well, I'm in a study right now. I'm in a, what is it? Copa trend. And uh, Julie kept care of that for me. And uh, I don't know, she just, if she says it, I do it. Yes, they want to know, would you encourage other veterans? Yes, I would encourage other veterans. I do enjoy, I do encourage other veterans. I got, had several people come down and go to the VA because I directed them. Well, it sounds like your endorsement has been uh, very, very powerful. So I really uh, want to thank you for that. Um, Dr. Montgomery, could you talk more about the precision oncology and the prostate and genitourinary cancer program within the VA, specifically as it re uh, relates to Mr. Seidel's care? 
Yeah, thank you, Dr. Clancy. And I just want to say how grateful I am to Mr. Seidel for sharing his journey with us. Um, his journey has been pretty detailed, um, and I'm going to refer to a couple of those things a little bit later on. But um, without him and veterans like him, we wouldn't be here doing what we do today. So um, it's worthwhile just reemphasizing something you heard earlier about precision oncology. You know, the history of treatment of patients with advanced malignancy was that we used to treat everybody exactly the same. Um, for example, with metastatic prostate cancer, you get this therapy, this therapy, and this therapy in this order, and everybody was treated in the same way, which that was standard of care. Precision oncology is really about looking at each individual and their tumor and tailoring the therapy to fit in a way that makes sense because you optimize the likelihood of um, the patient's benefiting and getting the best outcomes. So we do most of that today uh, by looking at the genetics of prostate cancer and some of these other malignancies that we treat, um, sequencing the tumor and the normal DNA, looking at the DNA alterations that might predict for benefits of therapies that we otherwise wouldn't have available for people. Sometimes it can be done on biopsies that already exist, prostate needle biopsies or prostatectomy specimens, or even just drawing a blood test, taking a look at that. And as I said, um, we also test normal DNA because both of these types of tissue can help us to tailor therapy for veterans who are dealing with advanced malignancy. Um, you heard Dr. Reddick refer earlier to this network that has developed out of a collaboration between the VA and the Prostate Cancer Foundation. And that network is really all about bringing the best precision oncology to veterans with advanced malignancy. Now, the big focus in our group is on prostate cancer, bladder cancer, and kidney cancers, uh, optimizing ways of finding patients who can benefit and bringing research to them where they are. So we're also developing novel approaches, actually trying to bring research even further afield to places that don't have formal research programs available. So sort of a, a virtual clinical research program is what we're trying to extend across VA right now. So the network has brought a lot of very novel approaches to both the sequencing, the treatment, and the research. So Mr. Seidel is a perfect example of how we hope things will go for people. So he didn't refer to it in detail, but you know the first research program that he participated in at the Portland VA was a, a, a program which improved the standard of care for men with metastatic disease. It wasn't a precision oncology program, but it was at the time cutting edge and he benefited and actually all men with advanced prostate cancer benefited because of his participation. Same standard of care. Um, he has subsequently gone on and, and had sequencing done through a centralized VA mechanism, uh, the National Precision Oncology Program that's available to any veteran with any advanced tumor of any kind. Um, so that is actually easier in VA than almost any place else to get the sequencing done. For him, an alteration was found called BRCA2. The standard of care approach for BRCA2 altered cancers, prostate cancers is already very good, but he also now has access to a research program which he's participating in at the Portland VA to improve on that. And as part of his care, he'll actually receive both treatments. So he's pretty much guaranteed the best two therapies that are available for that type of cancer. So, and his experience really shows how collaborative VA research can be. I mean, he's in a, in a study in Portland. Um, he didn't have to go anywhere else to participate, but it's a study that we've been coordinating across VA from Seattle. And uh, we think that this is a great example of how VA research um, is taking place in the network and more broadly across VA. Well, that is exciting. Can you just tell us what is the importance of testing normal DNA? Yeah, thanks again for a great question. So, you know, and I get that question a lot from the folks who I see in the clinic because, you know, they ask me, well, aren't we really talking about the tumor? Why are you looking at my normal DNA? Um, you know, it's intuitive to a lot of us, though, obviously, that, you know, the genes you inherit from your mother and your father can have an influence on your likelihood of having cancer. In prostate cancer, it's pretty common, actually, that um, people develop their prostate cancer because of one of those genes that doesn't function very well. Um, testing normal DNA is something that can be easily done, can be done at any time from anyone. 
And in some cases, that's all the testing that you need in order to get access to precision oncology, because if we know the cancer developed out of that malignancy, that, that alteration in their normal DNA, then we know that cancer will actually be sensitive to targeted therapies in many cases. So that, you know, by doing that, we can actually help the veteran to tailor their care, precision oncology. The second and equally important part of this is if, if we find that a veteran has developed prostate cancer because they had one of these genes that wasn't functioning normally, their family may also be affected. And so if we find a veteran has one of these alterations in their normal DNA, we can then provide that information to their family and they can have prevention in some cases, early detection in others. And so, you know, this testing of normal DNA is both good for veterans for their precision oncology care, but also good for their families. There's been a lot of work coming out of the prostate cancer program, which we sometimes call POPCAP, uh, where you all are adding to the understanding of prostate cancer, publishing something like 65 studies. That number may be outdated even as I'm speaking. Dr. Graff, could you please comment on how the VA and the Prostate Cancer Network are doing research in this area? Yes, thank you, Dr. Clancy, and thank you to Dave and his wonderful wife, Linda, for being here and for being my, Dave, for being my patient. Um, so with the resources we have from the Prostate Cancer Foundation and the VA, we've developed a series of clinical trials that are related to prostate cancer and very focused targets. So, you know, Dave's cancer has a certain mutation. He's on a trial for that mutation. Um, the VA is very unique. Some of these mutations that people have are very rare. And because we can look across the entire country, um, we can enroll to these studies. I should also note that excellence in, in cancer care is because of clinical research. You, you can't have an excellent cancer care group if they don't do research. Until we cure this cancer, we need to continue to do research. So I've been very fortunate to be in the position to direct the Clinical Trials Consortium. Um, I'm in direct contact with VA oncologists, urologists, and radiation oncologists across the country, as well as centers that don't have this research funding helping to get their veterans to the closest VA that has the trial. And I know Dr. Montgomery has done an, a tremendous amount of work doing what we call decentralized clinical trials. Some clinical trials are relatively low risk, you know, maybe looking at already available treatments, but in a different way. Um, so we could, you know, reach across to the veterans during, you know, video calls, um, and they can get their labs drawn locally and still participate in research. I am so excited and proud to be a part of this effort um, and so grateful that I get to work with Dave and other veterans. Well, so Dave, how has uh, participating in this study gone for you? Wonderful. <laughs> That's the only word I can say is wonderful. Uh, you know, we, we get in within reason of time appointment. And uh, like I said, my wife and Dr. Graff have a personal relationship. And uh, I just, you, you know, I mean, it's a long drive from Longview down to here. It's worth it. But it, it's worth it, you know. To be, uh, like I said, it's 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 wonderful. The Port and VA. Well, thank you for that, and I know that it's one VA that is literally connected by a bridge or a skywalk, if you will, to um, the Oregon University for Health and Sciences, which is amazing. Um, Dr. Graff, one of the priorities for the Cancer Moonshot is driving innovations from discovery to patients. So I think this means uh, that, you know, what we're learning from Dave to help Dave is also helping other veterans. Um, sometimes, though, it's kind of difficult to translate new innovations into the care for our veterans. 
Uh, could you please talk a little bit about how VA is able to link discovery to patient care? Yes, thank you, Dr. Clancy. Um, some of it relates to the virtual trials that I discussed earlier. But, and one thing Dr. Gilroy mentioned is just the tremendous amount of data we have on patients. Um, so tissue samples, blood samples, urine samples. First, you have to do um, a lot of analysis of these samples to drive hypotheses. Once you have a hypothesis, you come up with a clinical trial. And from there, it takes a little time, but you change patient care. Patient care is with, you know, patients live longer as a result. Um, so the VA is in a very unique situation where we have a huge presence in the United States. We have amazing veterans like Dave who are willing to give their time and effort to these clinical trials. And I believe the VA can answer some of the unanswerable questions in prostate cancer research. So any final thoughts from any of you? I do believe in God. <laughs> I claim him. Right next to Jerry Graff. You know, but... Well, that's, that's quite a compliment for sure. Yeah, Dr. Gladsey, do you mind if I mention something as well? Absolutely. Yeah, the, the, there's this old saying that if you don't look, you won't find. And I think, you know, if you're not looking for opportunities to treat cancer better, you're not going to find them. And the good news is that because of the, the moonshot and um, VA's commitment to precision oncology, we are looking for every opportunity to help veterans who are dealing with cancers through the precision oncology effort. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Montgomery. This Cancer Cabinet Community Conversation on Prostate and Genital Urinary Cancers has come to an end. A special thank you to our veterans, Patrick Dennison and Mr. David Seidel, Dr. Lieberman, our panelists, and our audience. In summary, for our providers, faith and spirituality can be an instrumental part of the healing process. In fact, a very recent publication in the Journal of the American Medical Association underscores what we heard from the two veterans today and how important that is. Precision oncology is now a standard part of treatment where any veteran with advanced prostate cancer can have specialized tests to guide precise treatment options. Testing your normal DNA if you have advanced prostate cancer has important implications for your family's health needs. Screening for prostate cancer is an important part of your health care. Please contact your primary care provider and find out whether prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, screening is right for you. For more information, visit cancer.va.gov. Thank you to the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy for your leadership, and we look forward to working with you to reduce cancer deaths. For more information on the cancer moonshot, visit whitehouse.gov forward slash cancer moonshot. We're going to get there.